Welcome back to Pattern. Just last week, Vice President Kamala Harris announced a federal investment that will help 400 school districts across this country electrify their school bus fleet. Yeah, and so here to talk about the big switch is Heather McTeer Tony, Vice President of Community Engagement at the Environmental Defense Fund. She's also a senior advisory for the Moms Clean Air Force, which this would, I would assume, go into that category. We're cleaning the air. The question we have to start off with is the big switch. Is the transition really going to be all that difficult to go from gas power to electric vehicle? Well, you know, we can do a whole lot of things in this country. And if there's anything that moms can get behind, parents in general, it is making sure that our kids are safe. And that's exactly the effort that is going to be a ba around transitioning us to electric school buses. So with just under a billion dollars that's going to be invested over the next five years, we will have 2,463 buses across this country, 95% of which will be electric, moving into that transition. It's going to not only make communities safer and healthier, but also think about all the jobs that are going to be created. Because with every school bus that's electrified, you also have to have the infrastructure in place. And that's what's going to be built out. Well, let's talk about this. Because every single day, millions of kids will ride on diesel-fueled buses. So what impact will this have on them? So transitioning electric school buses is really brilliant because not only does it help to reduce emissions and create clean air, it ensures that we have healthier communities and that our children, who oftentimes are uh, at risk of asthma attacks when they're around those diesel fumes or have health challenges, it puts them in a better position to learn every day when they go to school. And on top of that, Black and brown communities are more likely to experience disparity when it comes to airborne and emission-related illnesses, and minority children are more likely in a lot of places to be the ones riding the bus. So this helps in so many different ways. So, you know, this investment, this federal investment, is a great kind of kickstart, right? We're getting this thing initiated. Is it enough? And what is the next steps? So you got to remember, it's not as simple as just like buying a new bus or car and plugging it in. There definitely has to be charging stations and grids that are going to be built out to handle the demand. But that's part of the beauty, again, in this process. Doing this and investing it, can we do it? Absolutely. And it's going to help to expand and stabilize the electric system across the country because it's actually providing surplus energy storage. And for every one of these school buses, there's a bus barn. Uh, there's a place where you plug in. And it's oftentimes an opportunity to help create sustainable, renewable energy in a community. So it's going to be a process to build out, no doubt about that. But during that process, we'll be able to touch so many more people and opportunities. Let's compare apples to apples or buses to buses here. What about the cost uh, stacking up? in terms of maintenance for them, uh, range for routes, uh, capacity to carry students? So the cost of the electric school bus is going to be a little bit more than the cost for a diesel school bus, but here's the caveat. On the other side of it, it costs way less to uh, maintain them on a regular basis. So we're evening out the cost. And over time, of course, as electrification expands across the country, we'll be able to reduce those costs of the school buses. At the same time, we have the capacity to not only carry the same number of students and have the range, but it's more than just students riding the bus every day. Think about how many times we use those school buses I know I rode on a lot of school buses to band trips, track, football, taking your average um, field trip to a museum. The use of the school buses has an opportunity to really impact and far range more than just the normal in the morning and in the afternoon drop off. And organizations like Moms Clean Air Force have really been at the forefront of making sure that we can realize all of those benefits. We love it. We love having you on, Heather McTeer.